Hey guys, welcome to Pregnancy and Postpartum TV. Today we're doing pregnancy exercises to prepare for a normal delivery and an easy labor. Of course, every delivery is normal and natural, but if you are hoping to have a vaginal delivery or a delivery that's unmedicated or without interventions, a natural delivery, then that's what we're going to be preparing our bodies for today. You can start these exercises at any time during your pregnancy. They're designed to be safe for all trimesters. Of course, get clearance from your doctor, listen to your body, and only do movement that feels safe and good for you and your body. We're also going to practice breathing for an easy delivery. During our yogi squat later, we're going to talk about breaths for the first phase of labor when our body is doing the work. And then at the end, we're going to talk about breathing during the second phase of labor when we are pushing. You don't need any equipment for this workout except for a mat or a comfortable floor to get down on. And of course, I will keep making pregnancy exercises and workouts every week. If you like videos like these, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. We're going to start by warming up our spine. We can come to hands and knees. If your wrists are sore, you can put a pillow underneath your wrists or go down on your elbows as well. Let's exhale, rounding out the spine stretching through the back especially it might feel good in the lower back here inhale coming the way keeping your core engaged holding your baby in tight to your spine not letting your belly flop out this is also going to protect your core if you do this throughout the day I'll let you move with your own breath here Let's do one more. Good. Now we're going to move into bird dog, which is an excellent core exercise that's safe for pregnancy. It's going to help our core muscles prepare for pushing. We're going to exhale. And as we exhale, engaging our core, we're going to lift opposite arm and leg, engaging our glutes, the muscles of our back as well. And inhale, release down. We can switch to the other side. Engaging all of our muscles, feeling tight. Beautiful, let's do one more. Coming back to hands and knees. From here, we're gonna come up to a standing position. So however is comfortable for you, stand up. We're gonna do some sumo squats. Squats are one of the best things that we can do for labor preparation. So you can turn your feet out at about a 45 degree angle. We can take our hands to our hips for this one. And we're going to lower down, come up, squeezing our glutes and our legs at the top. Steady breaths. Beautiful. Let's do a couple more. Nice and low. Good. Now we're going to add our heels in. So we're going to go down, 
Raise your heels up if that feels good to you. Straighten, lower down. Squat, heels up. Straighten, squeeze, heels down. One more and then we'll go the other way. Good. Let's lift our heels up. Squat, heels down, straighten. Find a steady spot to gaze at to keep your balance. Do one more. Good, and come down. Lift your heels, let's pulse here. Getting lots of strength, opening up through our hips. Steady breaths. You can come up if you need to. Couple more seconds. Good, release. Let's shake it out. Now we're going to turn our feet in to get an internal rotation. We can place our hands on our hips. We'll lean forward into a wide-legged forward fold. You can keep your hands on your hips, or if it feels good, you can widen your feet out and place your hands on the ground, stretching forward. Take a couple of breaths here. Let's move back and forth and take whatever movement feels good. You can bend one leg, move towards that leg. Make your way to the other side. Stretching through your groin. Good. and placing your hands on your hips again with a lengthened spine let's come up good I'm gonna turn one foot to the side back foot is perpendicular arms out let's move into a warrior two position breathe here Feeling your legs strong. Good, pressing up. Let's turn our feet around to the other side. Front knee is pressing behind you. Beautiful, strong legs coming up. Let's turn our hips to face the side. We'll take warrior one here, bending our front leg. You can turn your back foot out, but outer edge is still pressing against the mat of your back foot. Inhale your arms up. Let's straighten our front leg, keeping our arms up, and then readjust back into warrior one. Let's bring our hands down, our shoulders pulling down our back, and inhale up. Using the muscles of your back, One last time. 
good. And we can bring our hands down to our hips, straighten our front leg. Let's turn to the other side. Hips are even towards the side of the room. Inhale your arms up. Straighten, make sure your hips are in the right position and then readjust knee over ankle. We'll pull our hands back again. Moving with resistance as if something was trying to stop your elbows. Last one, good. Coming up, we'll come down to our knees now. If you wanted to put a pillow or roll up your mat underneath, you can. We'll take a kneeling lunge. You can put your front leg out in front of you, hands on your hips, and then shift your hips forward. This is great to help get baby in the right position. Stretching through our psoas, our hip flexor here. Pressing into our front foot, we'll come back to our kneeling position, switching to the other side. Shifting our hips forward. Finding our steady breath. Good, one more breath here. Release a little bit more before you press into your front foot. Coming back to your knees. From here, we're gonna come back up standing. You can use your hands or use some blocks, but getting up safely. We're gonna do some more squats, but this time with our feet in a parallel position, finding the four corners of your feet, pressing evenly and exhale down as if you're sitting down in a chair and coming back up, moving with your breath. going down as far as feels safe and comfortable for you. You don't have to go down all the way. Let's do one more. Coming up, let's place our hands on our hips. We're going to take our feet nice and wide and squat down about halfway and we'll do some squat walks here. We'll go forward and the back, keeping our hips at a level, not letting them go up or down. Keeping our chest high. Come back to a centered position, coming up. I'm gonna face the front here. We're gonna move into a full yogi squat. So you can either, if you're comfortable just to move into a squat, you can do that. You could also put toilet paper rolls or weights or roll up your mat, put them under your heels, or you could sit on blocks or sit on a stool if that feels better for you. So whatever variation you're in, let's move down into yogi squat. 
Pressing your hands together, your elbows into your knees, sitting tall. While we're here in yogi squat, opening up our hips, which is great for labor preparation, I thought I would talk about breathing during the first phase of labor, which is from the beginning up until you are fully dilated. So the point of breathing at this time is just to keep relaxed and calm and distracted. And really we wanna be letting our body do the work. So for much of this time when you're having contractions, you may be lying down or over a ball or a chair, relaxed on the bed. And you may look as if you're sleeping, you're fully calm, you're fully relaxed and you're letting your body do the work. So there's a few different breaths that you can use, but the goal is that you are fully able to relax and also distracting. So I loved using the yogi breath that was familiar to me. Um, so that was with a slight restriction of the throat. So as if you are <sighs> fogging up a window, but with your mouth closed. And so I would go in through the nose and out through the mouth. <sighs> and I felt the energy going down, fully relaxing, and I would go in for three and out for three. You could also extend the exhale if that felt good for you. So in for three and out for six or eight. Good. Also, when you're having a contraction, you can play with the length and whatever feels good. So let's say you're starting a contraction, you're fully relaxed and you're doing your slow in And as the contraction is peaking, you may go faster. You may go. It comes to an end. It's distracting. It's calming. You're relaxing. It's getting you through. And if that feels comfortable for you, you can play with the different rhythms and breath, whatever feels natural for you. The other thing that I found helpful is to count my breaths and so that I knew exactly how many breaths I was going to take before the contraction was over. And because they're the same length, you can count them and you know how long you have until you get the next break. You can also use low toned sounds, which keeps you in control and calm. You can see if someone is getting high pitched or they're screaming, all their energy is going out. Whereas if you have the low tone sounds like Ah, the energy is going down, it's low, you're in control, and that may feel really good as well. So throughout your exercises or your yoga practice, you can practice your breathing in and out, really focusing on it. And that's one of the most important and the most helpful things for me to prepare for my labor. From here, we're going to make our way down to a wide-legged forward bowl seated. So if you wanted to, you can just plop back on your bum. You can come to hands and knees, or you can stand up first if that's comfortable for you. But however, you can find your way safely and comfortably to a seated position. We'll bring our legs wide apart. Again, just however far apart is comfortable for you. We're going to have our knees and our toes pointing up. Also, if it feels comfortable to sit on a pillow and creates more space for your belly, especially at the end, feel free to do that. Let's sit up tall, feel as if we have a string pulling the top of our head. Let's go side to side. Also, feel free to take whatever movement feels good for you here. Finding our deep, relaxing breaths. This can also help if baby is up in your ribs here, stretching up and over, making space. Do one more on this side, up and over. Beautiful, come on up. 
Now we're gonna bring our feet together for butterfly or baddha konasana. This is great for labor preparation in that hip opening position. It's going to make the inlet of your pelvis a little bit wider, so making space for a baby to move down. You can try to open up your feet like a book, rotating your hips out. Doesn't matter how far down they are. You wanna relax. Let's take a couple of breaths here. Good. Let's actually bring the knees up and we're going to press against our forearms. Releasing down, fully relaxing through your hips. Let's take a couple more breaths. Good. If it feels good, you can fold forward or you can stay sitting up straight. here. We're going to do a figure four stretch, which is great if you're having any sciatica or hip tightness. Let's put our feet out in front of us. You could also do pigeon. If you're comfortable with pigeon for a more advanced version, you could also do this sitting on a chair. We'll bring one foot up over our knee and you can walk in your bottom foot to wherever feels like a good stretch, not painful, sitting up tall. For a deeper stretch, you can also press on the top of your leg there. Finding your steady breath. Switch sides now. Finding the point that feels like a good stretch, but not over stretching, especially during pregnancy. Sitting up tall. Breathe. One more breath here. Good. All right, let's come to all fours again. We'll do some hip circles, which should feel really good. Lubricating all the joints of the hips, opening up the pelvis, we can go the other way. coming back to a neutral position. Let's make our way down on our side now safely to protect our core. So you can place your hips down and then carefully lower yourself down and we'll do some more exercises for an easy delivery. So you can prop your head up and if you wanted to, you could still put a, um, a pillow or something to support your belly if you find your belly is uncomfortable there. We can bend our bottom leg and we are going to engage and kick up. Good.
Let's do two more. Good, and let's raise. We're gonna pulse here, engaging your core, pulling your baby in. Small little pulses. Couple more seconds. Release down, good. Now we're gonna do some clamshells here, which is great for opening up our hips, strengthening, keeping your toes together, engaging your glutes. Awesome job, let's do two more. I can feel the burn, good. Now we're going to practice turning our knee in and out. I like to do this because while the, for the first phase of labor, we are wanting to open our hips, get baby down. As baby is crowning, now we wanna open the outlet to our pelvis, the bottom, to let baby out. And actually, when we rotate our legs in and ankles up, it's going to open the outlet to our pelvis to help baby get out. So this can be a helpful pushing position after baby is crowning. So we strengthen these muscles as well, turning our knees in, ankle up, and rotating out. Practicing the rotation, good. Beautiful, let's do one more. Good, release down, relax it. You can either roll over, I'm gonna to move to the other side, making sure we are protecting our core as we get down. Good, and we'll start with our leg lifts again, keeping everything tight and engaged. Two more, good, release down, and we'll come up, pulse here. As small and fast as you can go. One more second, release down, rest for a second. We'll do our clamshells here, toes together, engaging your glutes working on that external rotation. Good. Last one, good. Now we'll work on our external and internal rotation, getting that ankle up as high as you can. And keep going. If you were to look at my sit bones, you could actually see how the opening of the pelvis is wider when it's in an internal rotation. Let's do one more, good, release down. So you can actually stay here. We're gonna talk about breathing for the second phase of labor after you're fully dilated and ready to push. 
I'm going to come up to a seated position, but you could find here whatever position you're hoping to birth in. So side lying is great because you can go over a peanut ball from an externally rotated position and then you can turn internally after the baby crowns for pushing. You could also be on hands and knees. That's another favorite position that reduces the risk of tearing. And again, you can have your knees wide apart or you can bring it together for the very end. But ideally you're in a position that is using gravity as well as that you can move your sacrum here. If you're on your back and putting pressure on your sacrum, it's gonna close off and lower the diameter of your pelvis, making it harder for baby to get out. Actually, I am going to stay on hands and knees so you can see my positioning here. So we are talking about breathing to support the second phase of labor, not pushing. We don't want to put any unnecessary stress, especially while we're pregnant and already have a lot of stress on our pelvic floor already. This is when we're fully dilated and feeling the urge to push. So with my first baby, I didn't know about laboring down or waiting for the urge to push. I was fully dilated and I started pushing. I have broke blood vessels in my face and I was exhausted, but with my next two labors, I labored down and waited until I felt the urge to push. I actually heard myself grunting as my first sign, and then I really could just let my body do the work, and I was supporting my body with my breathing, and it went much more smoothly, and I was much less exhausted. So it used to be taught to take a big inhale in and then hold your breath for 10 seconds while you were pushing, but research shows that actually breathing while we do that is better for oxygenation as well as reduces the risk of tearing. So letting out an exhale, sending energy down is beneficial. So we can take a big inhale in and then using a low tone or energy down, we can exhale out. So you may feel it naturally, you wanna hold your breath for parts of it, you don't wanna hold your breath for too long, or it may sound very, the sound may be low and guttural, it might sound inhale in. Oh! It might sound something like that, or you could use your uh, vowel sound like ah, uh, ooh, so it might sound. But you can see how the energy is going down. You can curl around your baby instead of if you're screaming or blowing straight out, the energy is going this way. We want to keep low and energy moving down as we are supporting our pushing. We can come to a comfortable seated position now. I'm going to read the pregnancy card for the day. The card is, my body is strong, powerful, and prepared. Thank you for joining me for that pregnancy exercise class today. I hope that you enjoyed it. You are prepared. You are going to do amazing if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I would love to hear any feedback in the comments below. Of course, I will keep making pregnancy exercise and yoga every week. If you like videos like these, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and to support me, share this with another mom friend or mom community that you think would enjoy it. I also have lots of free resources that I will put in the description box below. I have a pregnancy meal plan that I put together as a registered dietitian, a guide on how to prepare your pelvic floor for the easiest birth and fastest recovery after, as well as I mentioned before, my complete guide on how to reduce and cope with pain during labor. Thank you so much for joining me again. If you like that video, I'm also going to link to another video that I think you would like, as well as the whole pregnancy workout and yoga playlist. You can save it and come back to the different workouts whenever you like.